Good evening everyone, I'm Anne Patrice Martinez and for today we're going to discuss the articles 1318 to 1324. So article 1318, there is no contract unless the following requisites concur. Consent of the contracting parties, object certain which is the subject matter of the contract, cause of the obligation which is established. So, si sa Article 1318, dinidiscuss nito yung mga requisites or elements in a contract. Sinasabi na contract is composed of the following, the consent, object, and the cause of the obligation. Remember the abbreviations COC para mas mabilis tandaan. So, yung consent, ito yung approval or yung agreement sa mga parties or tao na involved. Sa object, ito yung subject matter na pinag-uusapan sa nasabing contract. And lastly, yung cause of the obligation is the reason why the contract existed between the two parties. So, these three are important because without this, there is no such thing as a contract. So, next is the classes of elements of a contract. Essential elements of those without which no contract can validly exist. So, sa essential, kung wala yung mga element na, elements na to, which is yung sinabi ko kanina na COC, then there can no be contract. The absence of the essential element will make the contract void. So, contracts are subdivided into two, the common and the special. So, common is present in all contracts. Ibig sabihin, um, ito yung tatlo na sinasabi ko kanina, yung COC nga. And yung mga elements na to, yung uh, kasama sa kanya. Sa special naman, it is present only in certain contracts. For example, if it is a real contract, then dapat merong apat na elements. Um, kasama yung tatlo, yung COC, and then yung delivery of the thing. Next is solemn or formal. Ganun din, kasama yung COC, pero meron ding additional or special element, which is um, compliance with the formal formalities required by the law. Next is natural elements. Elements which are found in a contract by its nature and presumed by law to exist. Kunyari yung mga warranty of hidden defects or eviction in contract sale. Next is the accidental elements. Those which exist by virtue of an agreement for the purpose of expanding, limiting, or modifying a contract. Ang involved naman sa mga accidental elements is yung mga condition, clauses, terms, modes of payment, at saka um, penalties. So, let's discuss Article 1319. So, sa first sentence, consent is manifested by meeting the meeting of the offer and the acceptance upon the thing and the cost which are to constitute the contract. So, balik tayo sa, ano, um, sa meaning ng consent or nung contract. It is defined as the meeting of minds between the parties with respect to the subject matter and the cost of the contract. So, for example, Pogi offers to sell his car to Ganda for 1 million. Tapos, hindi pa nagko-consent si Ganda na bibili niya yung car kay Pogi. And then, si Pogi, winidro niya yung offer niya. So, the question is, is Pogi allowed to withdraw his offer? The answer is yes, kasi um, wala pang perfection of contract. Wala pang consent ni Ganda na bibili niya yung um, offer ni Pogi. And hindi pa nagkakaroon ng meeting of minds. And because of that, pwedeng umatras si Pogi sa ginawa niyang offer. So, paano nga ba masasabi kung uh, meron ng consent? So, here are the requisites of consent. So, first, there must be two or more parties. So, obviously, syempre kailangan uh, meron talagang involved na ibang tao kasi alam naman mag-consent ka sa sarili mo. Next, the parties must be capable or capacitated. Para magkaroon ka or makapagbigay ka ng valid consent, kailangan capable or capacitated yung tao. Kasi kapag hindi, um, do you think it is acceptable? No, kasi for example, um, balo yung kausap mo or something na may, may, na may mental illness yung tao na kausap mo. Then what do you expect for his or her consent, di ba? Kaya nga dapat yung parties na involved should be capable or capacitated. Next, there is no vitiation of consent. Walang panloloko na dapat nangyari. 
walang fraud, intimidation, or anything na nakaapekto sa consent. It must be, uh, it must be voluntary, intelligently na minigay si consent ng offeree. Fourth, there must be no conflict between what is expressly declared and what was really intended. Kailangan, dapat yung sinabi at tiniscuss mo sa mo na intention mo, kailangan ay hindi yung nakasulat sa contract. Dapat, ganun na siya at is, as it is. Ganun yung mangyayari at ayun yung makukuha ng kabilang party. Next is, intent must be declared properly. Whatever legal formalities that is required, it must be complied with. For example, kung kailangan ng mga documentations, proof, or public document, then kailangan i-provide din yun ng offer para mas maayos at mas, at mas malinis yung transaction or yung offer. So, next line, the offer must be certain and the acceptance absolute. Certain means it shouldn't be vague. It should not be misleading and kailangan offer is uh, certain or seriously intended. The offer must be definite so that upon the acceptance of the of the other party, an agreement can be reached on the whole contract. Ayun nga, um, kailangan specific yung kung ano talaga yung pinag-usapan sa contract and offer. Dito, parang maiwasan na rin yung substitute sa subject matter na nasa contract. Because by doing this, ayun nga, sabi ko nina, mas klaro at mas maayos yung usapan. Alam mo at alam din ng kabilang party kung ano yung dapat, ila, dapat nilang i-expect na makukuha nila. Acceptance absolute, ibig sabihin, inaccept mo ng buo. Walang, kondi- walang condition at hindi counter-offer. So, kunyari sa example kanina, no, nag-offer si Pogi na ibenta yung kotse niya kay Ganda for 1 million, dapat ang sagot and acceptance lang ni Ganda is yes or yes or I agree or I accept the offer. Ganun lang. Kasi once na sumagot na siya na pwede bang 800k na lang, ganun, then it is not considered an as, as an absolute acceptance. Condition na siya at counter, counter offer na siya. Um, it is a form of rejection to his um, original offer which is yung ibigay niya sa'yo yung car for 1 million. Ibig sabihin ng, uh, nung nangyari, ibig sabihin lang, uh, wala pang meeting of minds kasi wala pang acceptance dahil nga dun sa counter offer ni Ganda. Walang perfection of contract. A qualified acceptance constitute a counter offer. Ayun nga, uh, may mga times na bago magkaroon ng acceptance sa offer is hihirit pa yung offer ng counter offer. Kunyari, tatanggapin niya yung offer para... Pero, uh, sasabihin niya na, o oh, sige, bibilin ko yan, pero pwede bang babaan natin yung presyo? O kaya, pwede bang sa ganitong price na lang, ganun. So, the acceptance is of course depending on what will the offer say. Pero sa ganitong circumstances, uh, pwede mangyari yung acceptance sa counter offer. Acceptance made by the letter or telegram does not bind the offer except from the time it came to his knowledge. This talks about the acceptance through correspondence. Kunyari, yung acceptance is pinadala through letter or telegram. Magiging binding lang yung offer ni offerer from the time na inaccept niya na yung offer and it has come to his knowledge. So, for example, um, yung kanina pa rin na nag-offer si Ganda ng, ay si Pogi ng sasakyan niya for 1 million kay Ganda through letter. So, pinadala niya yung sulat by December 1, then December 5, Natanggap niya na yung letter and she consented na bibili niya yung car na in-offer ni Pogi. So, by December 10, dinrap na ni Ganda yung letter of acceptance niya sa mailbox. So, while the letter is in the course of mail, namatay si Pogi. So, the contract, is the contract perfected? The answer is no kasi nga ba magiging binding lang yung isang contract once it has come to the knowledge of the offer. Eh, yung nangyari, bago pa man din ma-receive nung yung letter of acceptance ni Ganda is namatay na si Pogi. Dahil nga hindi niya nalaman, hindi na rin nabenta yung um, sasakyan. The contract in such a case is presumed to have been entered into in the place where the offer was made. So yun, kung saan nagawa yung offer, it is presumption na dun din nangyari yung contract. Article 1320, an acceptance may be expressed or applied. Sinasabi lang dito na yung pag-accept mo sa offer is through an expression. Pwede through written or pwede rin yung verbally in which sinabi mo na okay, I accept the offer. Or pwede in the form of gestures na nakipag-shake ka after the 
discussion ng offer. Sa implied naman, it is not directly stated but it is demonstrated by any acts that is indicate an in that indicate an individual's agreement to the offer. Example, yung mga sa shopper, di ba, pipili sila ng items sa supermarket, then sa kanila babaray, babayaran pag nasa cashier na sila. The other form of acceptance is acceptance by promise and acceptance by acts, act, which is a self-explanatory. Article 1321, the person making the offer may fix the time, place, and the manner of acceptance, all of which must be complied with it. So, it talks about the things that may be fixed by the offerer. This can be the time, place, or the manner of acceptance. Si offer yung uh, mag-aayos ng mga ganong condition. And any act of contrary sa, sa nirequire ni offer constitutes a counter-offer or counter-proposal sa part naman ni offeree. So, example, kung si Pogi, siya yung nag-offer kay ganda, pwede niyang sabihin na, Uh, acceptance of this offer must be made in writing and dapat matanggap ko on or before December 15. Ganon. So, ayun yung mga dapat makomply ni Ganda. Basta this is about the conditions and na about dun sa contract, sa contract kung paano niya ma-accept, i-accept. Next, Article 1322, an offer made through an agent is accepted from time acceptance is communicated to him. So, meron tatlong parties na involved dito, which is yung offerer, offeree, and then yung agent. So, for example, may offer si Pogi Kikanda, pero pinadaan niya yun sa agent. And then yung agent, yung nagsabi kay Kanda ng offer. So, the fact na siya yung nagsabi ng offer, pwede na rin sa kanya sabihin ni Ganda yung acceptance niya. Kasi ibig sabihin sa article na to, kung yung acceptance is communicated through the agent, then it is considered accepted. And besides, agent is the extension of the personality of the principal or the offerer. Kaya kung kay agent man sabihin yung acceptance, then it is fine. Pero may mga situations na kung kunwari si Pogi yung nagsabi ng offer mismo kay Ganda, then dapat directly sabihin ni Ganda yung acceptance niya kay Pogi. Article 1323, an offer becomes ineffective upon the death, civil interdiction, insanity, or insolvency of either party before acceptance is conveyed. So, dito naman, sinasabi lang kung kailan mawawala ng visa yung uh, offer. This can be ineffective upon the death, civil interdiction, insanity, or insolvency of either party before acceptance is conveyed. So, if prior the acceptance is nangyari itong mga cir circumstances na to, then walang meeting of minds, so walang visa yung offer or yung contract. Next, um, Article 1324, when the offerer's, offerer has allowed the offeree a certain period to accept, kasi di ba minsan um, binibigyan tayo ng certain period of time para i-accept yung offer, kunwari uh, 30 days, then kailangan within that days, dun mo lang siya pwedeng tanggapin. Depende na lang kung i-extend ni offer yung period of acceptance mo. Ganun. The offer may be withdrawn at any time before the acceptance by communicating such withdrawal. So, yung offer ay pwedeng ma-withdraw any time before the acceptance ni offeree by communicating such withdrawal. Papaalam or sasabihin mo lang sa kanya na you are no longer interested or willing to sell kung sell man yung i-offer mo or kung ano man ang offer mo originally. Pero, syempre, may exception rin yan. Except when the option is founded upon consideration as something paid or promised. For example, si Pogi, in-offer niya na ibenta yung bayat lupa niya kay Ganda for 1 million through letter. Binigyan niya si Ganda ng 10 days to decide or accept the offer. Then, si Ganda is inter uh, interested naman siya to buy that house and lot na in-offer ni Pogi. Kaya, binigyan niya ng option, man option money si Pogi, kunwari um, 1,000 pesos. And then, after 3 days, binidraw ni Pogi yung offer niya. So, pwede nga ba yun? In this situation, hindi kasi may initial na nabinahid si Ganda. So, hindi basta-basta mawi-withdraw ni Pogi yung offer niya kay Ganda. So, sa article na to, may encounter natin yung mga terms na option contract, option period, and option money. Sa so, option contract, ito yung uh, usapan na binigyan ni Pogi si Ganda ng 10 days 
or period to accept the offer. Kasama na yung ibang conditions sa pag-accept ng offer. Yung option period, ito yung period mismo or yung time frame ng contract. And then, yung option money, ayun naman yung binayad ni Ganda na 1,000 pesos. It is the money paid or promised for the option. Partial payment na parang sinasabi ni Ganda na bibili niya or interesado talaga siya dun sa offer na buy at lupa ni Pogi sa kanya. That's all. Thank you.